So a few weeks ago, I visited my buddy in Henderson, Nevada. His backyard is literally an off-road track and he had an extra bike. It was a Honda 125F and I had an absolute blast with it. And although I have plenty of experience with not only SoCal Supermoto, but also American Supercamp, where I was lucky enough to be taught by some of the best riders in Moto America as of today, uh, people such as Jake Gagne, as well as Cam Peterson. Huh? inside these cones. Oh, know? inside the cones, okay. That's the whole drill. Even if you're doing that turn, that line was way wrong. Okay. Uh, I, the only thing this drill, the only thing we worried about at this drill is getting into the turn. I don't care about anything okay. else. How quickly can you stop the bike? Okay. That's all I care about. Gotcha and a whole bunch of other riders that a lot of you guys and I watch on TV. So that was a really, really memorable experience for me and I took away a lot of great things from those courses. But anyway, with all my experience doing SoCal Supermoto as well as doing American Supercamp, I can now brain dump everything and teach you what I learned about riding off-road not only at my weekend at Henderson, but also what I learned through these classes. A word of caution, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just someone who has experience taking some off-road riding classes. So if you want actual advice, take it from an actual expert and not from a YouTube content creator such as myself. But anyway, if you want to continue watching, this tutorial will be broken down into six steps. For starters, let's talk about step number one, because that is getting comfortable with your motorcycle. Getting to know your off-road motorcycle inside and out is the most important thing that you can do. Make sure everything is properly secured, nuts and bolts are tightened up, and you're fully ready to go. Because once you commit to riding off-road and you're out in the trails and you're far away from home, and of course, amenities such as stores and gas stations and whatnot, you're pretty much stuck. So if you're far away and it's really hot, you're gonna be stuck out there. So make sure you prepare well in advance for disastrous situations. One of the things I learned about off-roading is that off-road riding is going to require you to become comfortable with the bike enough that you can repair it on your own. I don't think it goes into first. You might want to check the clutch cable. The spike was crashed previously and something's wrong with the clutch. Before you actually venture off, it's probably a good idea to carry extra tools with you as well as a patch kit because you never know. And it's probably impossible to carry almost everything in your backpack because you don't want to weigh yourself down. Plus, it's not going to be fun. But the bare essentials is what I probably recommend. And lastly, considering how many times you're going to fall on your motorcycle and quite possibly damage it, you're probably going to price yourself out of this hobby if you can't do the repairs yourself. So get pretty good with the wrench and start wrenching away because this kind of hobby is going to require you to work on your own motorcycle because if you have to send it to the repair shop every single weekend when you come back from a ride it's going to start adding up and you're going to price yourself out of this hobby yeah! good escape route <laughs> And speaking of getting the bike banged up, lesson number two, wear the proper gear because you will constantly fall when you're riding off-road. Unfortunately, I wasn't wearing the proper gear when I went to Henderson, Nevada. I took what I had, it was my street gear. I didn't have boots that came all the way up to my shins. I took my regular riding jacket, which was pretty sufficient enough if you ask me, but it was really, really hot. Anyway, I hurt my shins really badly on the foot pegs because the foot pegs were razor sharp. And unfortunately, I kept banging my shins into them. And even though it's been a few weeks, I still have bruises on my shins. So my recommendation is get the proper boots, get the proper jacket, the proper helmet. Everything that you would need for riding off-road is what I would recommend for you. Do not take your street gear because you will regret it. So if you want to do this properly, make sure you spend some money on proper gear. Unfortunately, the chances of you falling on your motorcycle is pretty high. And there are circumstances where you're trying to avoid obstacles and it's something that unfortunately you can't do all the time. So prepare to constantly fall. But as I mentioned before, I definitely recommend the proper gear just in case you do fall. 
And now let's go ahead and segue on to step number three, which is getting used to the motorcycle constantly moving under you because riding off road is not the same as riding on the road with paved roads and lots of traction. This is every turn on a super motorbike, right? So half of what we're learning today is to lighten up and stay loose and let the bike wiggle around underneath us. So again, nothing to teach here. Just know that that's normal for the bike to be moving around a lot underneath you. Off-road surfaces are a lot more varied than your smooth, tarred roads while you're riding your on-road motorcycle. Because of the different types of terrain under you while you're riding off-road, your motorcycle is going to constantly move around you. And this is something that you need to get used to. And if you're not used to it, it's not something that you can fight. You just have to let the motorcycle dance under you, and it's totally okay. As a motorcyclist on the road, riding off-road for the first time, you're gonna find this to be really strange. But the key is to stay relaxed and not grip the handlebars too tightly. Because the more stiff you become, the more stiff the motorcycle becomes. Sometimes, letting the motorcycle dance around you as well as the handlebars is the motorcycle's way of making itself more stable. And it's something that you have to get used to. If you take a look at the top riders all around the world, you will notice that most of them ride off-road. And it's because riding off-road will make you a lot more comfortable in an on-road circuit type situation where if the motorcycle goes off-road into the gravel trap or maybe perhaps you're coming in way too hot, the back wiggles a little bit, it's not something that you're really alarmed about or you're not really taken by surprise because these are things that you already learned while you were doing off-road. If you take a look at MotoGP as well as Moto America or World Superbike or BSB, every single top rider within those categories are also doing off-road riding. The benefit of doing off-road riding is that it makes you a lot more comfortable while you're on the road. Those little slides that you had off-road, on the road, they won't bother you as much or take you by surprise. And this is why it's really key not to get stiff on the motorcycle, not to get stiff with your handlebars, and to always stay relaxed and let the bike dance underneath you. Proper riding position for off-road. Poor riding position for off-road. Riding position for high speed. Poor turning position. You're gonna see sand, you're gonna see dirt, you're gonna see rocks, pebbles, boulders, a lot of obstacle avoidance, and the motorcycle will become unsettled. So the best thing to do is to stay relaxed. And with that being said, let's talk about number four, which is to use your legs and your body weight, not just the handlebars, to turn your motorcycle. One of the biggest misconceptions of most riders is that they think that when you're riding off-road and sometimes on the road, they think that the only way to steer a motorcycle is through the handlebars, but that is far from the truth. Instead, with your butt planted on the seat, use your entire body to shift the motorcycle to the direction that you want to go. But don't get this confused with hanging off of the motorcycle because that's an entirely different thing and I don't recommend it when you're riding off-road. What most people do when they get on this thing is they tend to stare at it. They're like, oh, okay, look at that. You know, look at that big old flag over there. Look how cool that flag is. I'm to my house. Look up. What a nice day it is. And what I want you to do when you're on this thing is I actually want you to lean the thing over like you're going around the corner. But if you're trying to do it with your shoulders, you'll be here all day. But if you just put your foot out here, get the thing leaned over. When you get here, max lean angle, I want you to find the body position. You can just sit here, pick your foot up, balance the thing and control it right here. That's it. There's no way you're pulling that knee off that shroud. That knee's stuck in the shroud. Okay? Outside this tight, then butt up the outside a little more. Don't you get on top of it a little more. There you go, that's it. Now, let go of the other ones. Dangling your legs with your toes pointed upwards can also help stabilize your motorcycle. This is another technique that I recommend. This technique is mostly used by MotoGP riders as well as other professionals in the road racing field. This technique was first developed by Valentino Rossi in his flat track environment out in Italy. And then later on, he started implementing it within MotoGP. And now it's widely been accepted, not only in World Superbike, but also Moto America and pretty much anyone who's a professional these days. That being said, you don't need to be a professional in order to practice this. If you're going anywhere between 15 to 20 miles per hour while off-roading and you notice your mo motorcycle becoming a little bit unstable, you can always dangle your leg with your toes pointed upwards, not downwards or flat, but upwards, just in case there's a rock or a boulder or something, you don't want to end up hurting yourself. But 
Depending on the direction you're going, you can always dangle your feet with your toes pointed upwards, and this can also help stabilize your motorcycle. But as I mentioned, another tip that can help stabilize and turn your motorcycle is by shifting your body a little bit towards the right or to the left while keeping your butt planted. And then finally, my last suggestion is that because you're not going at that high rate of a speed when you're riding off-road, chances of you going more than 15 miles per hour are pretty slim, especially if this is a very challenging track along with boulders and rocks and sand, etc. So what I would recommend for you is putting a lot of pressure either on your left or on your right foot peg because this can also help move your motorcycle left or right depending on the situation with, in combination with not only using your handlebars but also a little bit of body movement. So if you put all that together, not only will your motorcycle be a lot more stable but you can also turn your motorcycle while stabilizing it all at the same time. And now let's go ahead and move on to lesson number five, which is to look ahead while you're riding. Now I know you purposely like to ride in challenging environments. I totally get it. You purposely make it difficult to ride and because of that, it's a lot more fun while you're trying to avoid obstacles. And this is what makes off-road riding so enjoyable. In fact, I also faced a lot of obstacles such as hills going, not only going up, but also going down, boulders, rocks, sand, you name it. But to me, it was a whole lot of fun. And without all these little obstacles to navigate through, it wouldn't be as fun. However, for most people, obstacle avoidance and just going out for a relaxing ride is probably more enjoyable. And not a lot of people are going to be doing the kind of challenging environments that you and I are going to be doing. But in either scenario, looking ahead to where you need to go is very, very important. Unlike traditional street riding, off-road riding requires you to look at least 20 meters in front of you, but you got to be careful not to target fixate. If you look directly below you while you're riding in order to avoid obstacles, you may end up crashing into whatever you're looking at. What most people do when they get on this thing is they tend to stare at it. They're like, oh, hey, look at that. No, look at that big old flag over there. Look at how cool that flag is. I had it on my house. Look up. What a nice day it is. So target fixation is something that is pretty common when riding off-road because you want to obstacle avoid and as a result of that you crash into the obstacle you're trying to avoid in the first place. So therefore it's very very important to look ahead at least 20 meters in front of you and also use your peripheral vision to avoid all sorts of obstacles. So if you're trying to avoid an obstacle make sure you spot it at least 20 meters in front of you and not when it approaches your motorcycle within a few feet. This rule not only applies to off-road riding but also to on-road riding but with off-road riding, you don't have pedestrians and you don't have oncoming traffic because obviously you're off-road. However, one thing that can replace traffic and pedestrians is obstacles because there are a whole lot of obstacles that you're going to try to avoid. And if you target fixate, you can definitely end up crashing. All right, so now we're in lesson number six. And lesson number six is doing something that is quite enjoyable and kind of relaxing if you ask me because it takes off the pressure and the pain off of your spine. So don't be afraid to stand up on the foot pegs while you're riding off-road. When most people think of riding motorcycles, they usually see the rider sitting down and holding the handlebars while in an upright position. However, when you're riding off-road, it is almost advantageous to actually stand up on the foot pegs. It relieves you of not only back pain, but also pressure. So you let your legs take most of the bumps it kind of acts as a little spring or suspension for the rest of your body if you want to call it that the other benefit is if you have high handlebars and you're able to stand up on the motorcycle this gives you more control of the bike itself and of course it'll become more stable this is mostly due to physics by moving the center of gravity from the saddle point to the point between the wheel spindles you're more closer to the ground and therefore more stable and of course, let's not forget, being higher up will also improve your visibility. Of course, standing up on the motorcycle will take a little bit of practice. And of course, you're gonna to need to gain the confidence to do so. So start little by little and practice for five minutes at a time while you sit back down and then get back up later on and slowly build up to it. All right, now we're in lesson number seven. We're gonna be talking about using the front and the rear brakes. It's a subject that can be debated on end and no one will come to the same conclusion. So let's go ahead and start up this debate, but this time in an off-road environment situation. As I mentioned before, when you're riding off-road in gravel, in sand, rocky situations, etc., using your front brakes, especially if you're going downhill, 
will make your front end wash out underneath you and therefore you're going to have a high side or a low side chances of a high side are pretty slim because you're not going that fast but there are high chances of you low siding your motorcycle and getting flinged off of it especially if you're in loose sand or gravel so that being said, my preferred method of slowing down on an off-road motorcycle is probably using the rear brakes because you're really not going that fast to begin with. And the rear brakes will make your motorcycle oversteer a little bit. So the back is gonna kind of spin out a little bit. And that's part of getting used to the motorcycle as we talked about in a previous lesson. But anyway, using the front or the rear brakes, no matter if it's on the road or off-road, can be debated on end. It really depends on your style of riding, whether you're riding in slippery surfaces, uphill or downhill situations, and there are a lot of different variables. So I really can't tell you which one is the right way or the wrong way to do it. It just requires a lot of time and effort put into practicing. So my recommendation is for you to go out there, just practice, but just keep one thing in mind. If you're going downhill and you're using your front brakes, you might end up having a front end washout, which basically means the wheel turns all the way and the bike ends up falling into a low side and hopefully you don't hurt yourself. And now it's your turn. Do you have any additional tips and tricks for off-road riders, leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching.